In this model, we shall discuss about theorems of welfare to externality, inefficiency and property rights. An externality exists whenever the welfare of some agent, either a firm or a household depends not only on his or her activities, but also on activities under the control of some other agent. After starting this module, you will be able to understand the concept of Pareto efficiency, understand theorems of welfare economics, know why market fail, understand externalities in production, consumption and property rights. First, we shall discuss Pareto efficiency and Edgeworth box of exchange. Assume that Bina and Anish spend all of their income either to consume food or to dispose of the garbage. If either Anish or Bina consumes more food, less money income will be left to dispose of the garbage and vice versa. Garbage is an economic bad as nobody would like to keep it at home. But it is not a public bad as it is rival in nature. It may become a public bad if not disposed of properly. Burning of garbage or throwing of toxic waste like lead, mercury etc. into river or onto the land or anywhere else will badly affect not only the individuals but all the people in that locality. Therefore, we are assuming that proper disposal of garbage reduces economic bad, the garbage, hence the process of garbage disposal or service is economic good like food. The indifference curves representing food and garbage disposal services on its axis for Anish, similarly for Bina, are normal negatively sloped indifference curves satisfying all their properties discussed in various test books of microeconomics. The mixed consumption of both the goods at points A, B, C or D will give higher satisfaction as compared to single good consumption at points M or N. The satisfaction for Anish will increase as he moves on to a higher indifference curve. If we put Bina's indifference curves over Anish indifference curves by rotating it 180 degrees anti-clockwise as shown in figure, we can have Edgeworth box of exchange. The Edgeworth box will make it convenient to simultaneously study the behavior of both Anish and Bina. The horizontal axis represents the quantity of food originally represented on x-axis available in the economy for Anish as well as Bina and the vertical axis represents the total quantity of garbage disposal service in the economy. If FA represents quantity of food consumed by Anish and FP by Bina, GA and GB are respective consumption of garbage disposal services by Anish and Bina. F and G are the total quantity of food and garbage disposal services produced in the economy then FA plus FP is less than equal to F equation 1, GA plus GB less than equal to G equation 2. Let's assume that the initial endowment at point N dash is not Pareto optimal. At this point, Anish has got only food and Bina has got only garbage disposal. We further assume that the exchange of goods between Anish and Bina is possible. Hence, Anish will exchange some of the good with garbage disposal service of Bina to make him better off. Moving to any point in the shaded area, N dash 
CPQE will make both of them better off, but it will not be possible to make anyone further better off without making other worse off if they shift anywhere on the line CE edge worth contract curve of exchange. On all the points on this line, their indifference curves are tangent to each other. Therefore, moving to higher indifference curve for one will result in shifting to lower indifference curve for another one. Now the question arises that how much quantity of food will be exchanged for garbage disposal? It will depend on the relative utility of garbage disposal for both of them and the relative price. The relative utilities will determine their marginal rate of substitution of garbage disposal for food. If we introduce a market where these goods may be sold for a price and the price for garbage disposal is given by PG and for food by PF. If the MRSGF is greater than relative price of good that is PF upon PG for Anish, he can be better off by increasing the consumption of food. In figure at point A, the slope of indifference curve is 2. It means MRSGF is also 2. Hence, the consumer is ready to sacrifice 2 units of garbage disposal for 1 unit of food. This implies that the value of food should be double the value of garbage disposal only then the consumer will not be willing to change the relative consumption. But in figure 3, PF upon PG is 1, therefore the consumer will increase food consumption by reducing garbage disposal till he reaches point B where MRSGF also becomes 1. From this we may conclude that Explanation 1 A consumer may be made better off by redistribution unless the marginal rate of substitution slope of indifference curve and the relative price slope of budget line are not the same. When the indifference curve is tangent over the budget line, we can't make a niche similarly be a better off, hence the equilibrium. In figure, line N dash M dash is the budget line for both Anish and Bina as it is starting from initial endowment point for both of them. By rotating clockwise and anticlockwise, we find a position of the budget line where the indifference curves of Anish and Bina are tangent to each other as well as the budget line N dash M dash. Point E star on this budget line is such a point where MRS Anish is equal to negative PF upon PG is equal MRS Bina. This point represents efficiency in exchange as we can't make anyone better off without making other worse off and both. Anish and Bina are willing to sacrifice the same quantity of garbage disposal for food. Therefore, they are satisfied with present allocation at point E star. As they are not willing to change this allocation, both of them are in equilibrium. If the market forces are allowed to work freely in a competitive market, they will automatically find a price ratio and the allocation of goods satisfying equation 3. Now we shall discuss the Pareto efficiency in production. Our resources for the production of food and garbage disposal services are limited. Suppose these limited resources are land, terrain, tea and of labor L. The economy's production possibility curve Fg is shown in figure. The point F represents if all the resources are used to produce only the food and similarly at point G only garbage disposal is produced with all the resources. The slope of production possibility curve on any of its point is marginal rate of transformation of food for garbage disposal.
This MRT shows that how many units of garbage disposal can be increased for sacrificing one unit of food while using all the resources. At point A, the slope of production possibility curve is 2. Therefore, the economy can increase the production of garbage disposal by 2 units if 1 unit of food is sacrificed. All the points on this production possibility curve are Pareto efficient as we can't increase the production of one good without decreasing the production of another good. In a market economy where the goods can be sold for a price, the efficiency in production requires that the slope of production possibility curve should be equal to the price ratio. Let's suppose that these two slopes are not equal price of food pf is rupees 5 and the price of garbage disposal pg is also rupees 5 so that pf upon pg is equal to 1 and the mrt is 2 there is a possibility of improvement from point a as the economy can produce a value of rupees 10 two units of garbage disposal by sacrificing a value of rupees 5 one unit of food as MRT at point A is 2. At point E MRT is 1 which is equal to price ratio therefore point E is Pareto improvement over point A and no further improvement is possible. In an economy both the goods can be produced by a single firm or by more than one firm. In such case, where more than one firm are producing both the goods, the marginal rate of transformation for all the firms should be equal to price ratio. For any firm, if MRT is not equal to the price ratio, then as shown in example, it can produce a higher value by changing its production pattern. Automatically, in a perfectly competitive market, the marginal rate of transformation for all the firms will be same and it will be equal to price ratio. Now in our example, the economy is producing at point E. The quantities of food and garbage disposal at this point are the quantities taken in figure. Combining the earlier two figures, we can simultaneously see the efficiency in production and exchange as shown in figure. Using our scarce resources, land and labor, food and garbage disposal are produced. Both of these two commodities are being consumed by Anish and Veena. All the efficient allocations require that marginal rate of transformation for all the producers should be equal to price ratio and simultaneously the marginal rate of substitution should also be equal to price ratio. If we take out the price ratio, then the efficiency requires that marginal rate of transformation for producers should be equal to marginal rate of substitution for consumers. In a competitive economy, the equilibrium will not be stable unless this efficiency in exchange and production are not met. Next, we shall discuss about externality in production and consumption. We can find a number of examples of negative externalities in production and consumption around us. Few externalities affect the individual while the others affect everyone coming in contact. Noise from a dance club may force to nearby recording studio for extra care to make it soundproof. Figure is showing the negative externality in production. The dust particles generated by coal power plant affect the quality of linen being washed by nearby laundry. Higher the production by power plant, higher the generation of dust particles. The production function of laundry may be denoted by L is equal to F in bracket X1, X2 till Xn. Equation 4. L is output in the absence of any externality or dust. X1, X2 till Xn are various inputs used by laundry producer. L dash is equal to F dash in bracket X1, X2 till Xn, comma E. Equation 5. L dash is output in the presence of dust or negative externality E. Higher E means lower L dash. 
the production of power plant is not affected by the externality as the power plant is producer of externality and the laundry is victim. Therefore, the output P of power plant is the function of its input Y1, Y2 till Ym only. P is equal to Fp in bracket Y1, Y2 till Ym equation 6. The quantity of externality produced E by power plant depends on the quantity of power P which is function of its input. Hence, E also depends on these outputs. E is equal to Fe in bracket capital E which is equal to Fe in bracket Y1, Y2 till Ym equation 7. Let's suppose that economy has to produce both the goods. If both the goods are important, then neither P quantity of power being produced nor L quantity of laundry being produced should be 0 or P greater than 0 then E greater than 0. Now we have to find the desired level of externality as it can't be 0. The relative importance of these two commodities power and laundry for the people will determine their prices. If power is very important, then people can bear the burden of externality by producing the efficient levels of power and externality. Let's suppose that the prices of power and laundry are PP and PL respectively. Now, if power plant is producing at its maximum capacity, then externality will also be maximum and this will reduce the value of laundry. In figure point A is such point where the power plant is producing the maximum output P1 and laundry is producing L1 which is not maximum because of the presence of negative externality. The presence of negative externality adds marginal external cost MEC to marginal private cost MPC of power plant and collectively they become marginal social cost MSC. MEC plus MPC is equal to MSC equation 8. In the absence of well-defined property rights, market prices fail to capture the spillover effect of externality and the outcome of a free market is either overproduction in case of negative externality or underproduction in case of positive externality. In such case, a third party intervention government is needed to achieve the efficiency. If the power plant and laundry merge, the MEC becomes the part of MPC for power plant and the prices reflect the efficiency in production. After merger, the efficient level of output of power and laundry are denoted at point B where the total value V is maximum. V is equal to PP into P plus PL into L equation 9. At point B, slope of production possibility curve is equal to relative price of power. At point B, the quantities of power and laundry produced are P2 and L2 respectively. Though the negative externality exists at point B, but this has become irrelevant as the power plant is itself bearing the marginal external cost at point A, the power plant is bearing only the private cost of production and the laundry has to bear the cost of externality. Therefore, the power plant is trying to minimize only the private cost. The further reduction in the production of power from point B to reduce externality is not desirable as it will reduce the total value of production for the economy. We can say that at point A externality is relevant Hence, we need to reduce it and at point B, it is irrelevant. Hence, we don't need to reduce it. Moving on to the discussion of environmental externalities. There are so many examples of environmental externality around us. Hunting of endangered species, air pollution by airplanes or vehicles on the road, toxic waste disposed of on land, drainage of untreated polluted water into the river or groundwater are among the few examples where ecosystem, air, land or water is affected because of negative externality. 
In all these cases, MPC is much lower as compared to MSC in these examples. Not only the present generations have to bear the cost of externality, but also the future generations will have to bear it. It is quite possible that MEC is much higher than our expectations. Assume that the private market for textile manufacturing is perfectly competitive. Textile manufacturing requires large amount of water for its production process. Further assume that these manufacturing units are disposing of its waste water without treating into the groundwater. The supply and demand curves for the industry are denoted by following linear equations. Supply P is equal to A plus BQ equation 10 demand P is equal to C minus DQ. Here the supply curve also represents the marginal private cost as the presence of externality makes private cost different from social cost. The demand curve also represents marginal private benefit. We also assume that the agency supplying the water to the city is using this groundwater for water supply. The externality will increase the cost of water treatment, hence this is production externality. The production externality affects the supply curve which is also MPC and the consumption externality affects the demand curve which is also marginal private benefit curve MPB. The equations 7 and 8 may be written as MPC is equal to A plus BQ equation 12, MPB is equal to C minus DQ equation 13. Figure is showing the competitive equilibrium of textile manufacturing. Point E represents equilibrium quantity and price. Here the market fails as this equilibrium is ignoring the externality. Though it is quite difficult to estimate the cost of externality, but there are many methods in economics to determine the approximate cost. Suppose the marginal external cost MEC is increasing function of quantity of textile MEC is equal to EQ equation 14. From these equation we can find the equation for MSC. MSC is equal to MPC plus MEC equal to A plus BQ plus EQ is equal to A plus in bracket P plus E into capital Q equation 15. We can find the efficient equilibrium if we consider the point of intersection of MPB and MSC instead of MPC to find the equilibrium. The new equilibrium point E1 in figure is just like point B of figure 8. The externality at this point E1 has become irrelevant. We can easily find the welfare gain to the society. From the perspective of the firm, there is loss in the profit equal the area of triangle EE1A. From the perspective of the society as a whole, there is a gain equal to the area of rectangle EAE1B. The net gain is the welfare gain to the society minus profit loss to textile manufacturing and that is represented by the area of triangle EE1B. Let us now summarize what we have learnt in this module. An externality exists whenever the welfare of some agent, either a firm or a household depends not only on his or her activities, but also on activities under the control of some other agent. A consumer may be made better off by redistribution unless the marginal rate of substitution, slope of indifference curve and the relative price slope of budget line are not the same. First theorem of welfare economics states that in a competitive economy, the allocation of resources will be Pareto efficient or the market equilibrium will be Pareto optimal. Second theorem of welfare economics states that the Pareto optimum equilibrium or the allocation can be achieved by market forces in a competitive market by redistribution provided that the resources are appropriately distributed in the beginning. Markets fail in the presence of externalities as the prices do not reflect cost or the benefit accrued by third party.